Piglets are upset with me. I took about a scoop or so of what we dropped in the barn here off the ground, um, which is where I think I'm gonna start transitioning our shredding to, to so that we can save and just sweep it up. Um, to the piglet speed. Um, so we're gonna give that, we're gonna, it'll get soaked here now. And we're gonna give that to them and run it as a trial run, see how this works before we go devoting any more time to it. So, I gotta hurry up here, to destroy the barn. Um, I let it soak while feeding two other groups of the pigs, which is what I normally do. I feed the uh, one group of the breeder ladies and Payday over there in quarantine. Um, just gave it another stir real quick or else it just dunks to the bottom. If you see any of the long stemmy pieces stuck to this. Um, but after having soaked, that's nice, soft, and pliable. And that was like a maybe 10, 10 minute soak tops. These are all soft and pliable, whereas they were, Here's a similar piece on the ground. Snappity, crunchy, crisp. Um, so, I think that's gonna work. Uh, you can see it's pretty pretty thickly mixed in here, but not crazy overdone. I think for a small group of young ones like this, that'll work. For bigger ones, I'll probably do at least one or two scoops per bucket. And the goal of this is just to make sure to, that they're getting plenty of greens in their diet throughout the winter. Um, We'll still have to buy some hay, but hopefully this will reduce that. And you know, they always waste a fair amount of hay. This will ensure that it's actually going in their diet, same as it would in the summer when they're actually out there able to graze and forage. So hopefully this works. I'm gonna feed it to them and see if they bulk at it. I doubt they will. They're, you know, pigs, so they'll usually eat whatever you put in front of them to an extent. But uh, yeah. Well, as expected, they did not balk at it. Also, they do have two pans. They're just being idiots. Maybe that one will go over. No? Um, yeah, not balking at it. Chugging it down, same as they always do. Wouldn't really have expected anything different, but I uh, also just wanted to make sure that nobody chugs on too hard on a stem or something. Um, and they don't need this right now. Like I said, this was just an experiment to make sure that this wasn't a waste of my time because they've got access to a paddock right now. They're here on the concrete pad because that's where their water barrel their shelter and where I feed them. They can go back out in the field all day. They just come in here because they know that's where they're gonna get fed. Um, but yeah, then these guys hopefully next week get to move out with everybody else, all the other feeders in the field, um, and we'll be taking in a couple for the other feeders to the processor. And then I won't feel concerned with these guys being out and they're actually starting to gain some size now. Um, so I won't be worried about them being with all the other bigger ones now that they're getting pretty decent size themselves. So also another another uh, update on our kyphosis piglet, I guess it'd be good, wouldn't it? He's that spotted one right here in the middle, middle spotted one. And no, not a top line I'd wanna see on a breeder, but that's not as bad as I thought it was gonna turn out to be. So I'm pretty happy. Oh, thank you. That was not fun. Yeah, they need a better... They've got... They'll, these pans will go out with them in the field, so then there'll be six pans for only nine pigs. So they'll have... And they're bigger pans out in the field for everyone else. But cool. I really think that this uh, was a success. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to just try flipping it around like this. I'm going to stand up. I think this was a success, and I think especially when I start doing the shredding in the barn into the barrel and container, I'll get a lot more of it. I really do think we wasted like a third of what we were collecting, just carrying the bundles back and forth that's all over the ground. Um, and I don't think you just need to use giant ragweed because tree hay is a thing. Um, our mulberries and hackberry, they go great coppice. These get cut uh, these are every two year cut. This one is every year and it's still that and it's hard to gauge scale But that is a full-size cattle panel next to it uh, And you can see and it's cut about the height of the cattle panel there. So that's one year's growth um, This This here is two years growth on that 
but it doesn't need like it does almost that in one year it's maybe gained four or five foot this year so those are 15 16 feet tall it, it goes almost 10 foot in one year these willows you can see compared to my trailer that's eight to ten foot of growth in one year that one is cut those two trees there three i guess three stems are cut every year so if you wanted and you were suffering a real bad drought, you could cut these early. I normally cut them after all the leaves have dropped, but with tree hay, you'd go ahead, and it's pretty popular practice over in Europe too, you'd cut them for fodder, but you could dry the stems. Uh, and then with that method, you could dry the stems, shred off the leaves like I've done into a container to store it for winter use, because that's the biggest issue I have with tree hay is these big bundles of branches with very little actual material on them. So it's not a very efficient storage. But I think crumpling them like you would dry herbs, like I've done there in the barrel, will make feeding it easier. Less will get wasted on the ground by mixing it with my soaked feed. Um, and that ought, to, that ought to really help cut down on the storage so I can have way more of this tree hay because I'm just using the ragweed um, and some aster and some common ragweed. Um, but if you're doing regular tree hay, you can do the same thing, I think. And it would work just fine if you're soaking feed. Um, now, obviously, if you're feeding goats, you're not going to soak feed. I don't know. We never did. And I don't know that many people that do, but pigs, it's pretty common to soak feed. So I think this is a pretty viable option to deal with drought and to deal with weed pressure on your farm while still maintaining that nutrient density that you're going to get from stuff that's already grown on your farm. If that has been a priority for you is building your soil health. Um, if not, and your farm is still pretty young and you haven't been working that and building that nutrient density, then maybe you are better off buying hay from uh, that's already ground or just buying normal hay from somebody else. Like I said, we're still going to have to buy some, but hopefully this cuts down a good bit and still makes sure that they're getting plenty of greens in their diet while they're out on pasture, but the grass isn't really growing because we our pigs are out on pasture all year round with the exception of sows in farrowing yards, which are still big size farrowing yards that the only reason they lose the greens is because they've been in there for so long, um, you know, six, seven weeks. So yeah, I'm pretty stoked about this idea and I think it's going to work. There's not that much time involved in all of this. I think the, uh, the costs, time costs are going to outweigh any loss of me just buying bags of this. Um, if you've got any questions on this or tips and suggestions, absolutely drop those in the comments. I think this is going to be a very successful thing for us moving forwards, but we'll run through the winter and see how that goes. And like I said, once I finish getting everything cut, I'll do an update, one more in a three-part series here, um, on how much we wound up getting and put in bags and the stuck in. Um, if you're doing tree hair or even like this, you don't necessarily have to chip the stems. I'm chipping it because I'll use it for mulch or either, like I said, maybe we'll try growing some oyster mushrooms again. I've made our own spawn before. I don't really want to spend any money on it. Um, but you have that option to then, once the leaves are off, you could chip them, chip the stems to do for either garden mulch or stems or branches from the tree hay, chip it for either mulch in the garden, chip it for um, oyster mushroom production, um, or I guess even, you know, if you had the right species, doing shiitakes or something like that in bags. Um, you could also burn it for biochar. That's probably what we'll wind up doing with a lot of it in future years because the chipping that's just a lot of extra work when really I could just throw it all in a big pile and just burn it, to be honest, um, and then spread that. It'd be smaller, uh, smaller biochar than what we get when we burn big, heavy tea branches because I think the, they really got that hollow pith in the ragweed. So I think that it's gonna, yeah, you got tons of options. Or you could just stack it out and make a big dead hedge like we've done um, up in our front yard. If you check out the video of me asking for one or two channels, you can see our big dead hedge nest that we built. Birds absolutely go crazy for that. Um, you could also lay them out in the field, making a dead hedge along low water areas, uh, essentially make a beaver dam to slow down water and trap it on your field. Um, the options for having sticks on your farm, which is one thing I love about coppice, you have tons of, is endless. There's so, so many possibilities. And at this point, I'm just getting two products for one, which I love when I get to be able to do. I get the hay from it, and I get the branches to be able to use for stuff. And if you're drying down the willow branches for that, then you also have willow bark. So once you strip off the leaves, then you could strip off the willow bark, which is easier when it's green, I will tell you that. So that is one benefit to cutting them in the winter is that you can strip that bark off real easy, but then you have to dry the bark separate. 
So I don't know, maybe that's an option. Maybe I'll give it a go this year. Um, <clears throat> cut and dry some of the stems and try to pull them, but you'd need to, yeah, no, that's probably not a great idea. Stripping dried willow bark would be a real pain in the butt compared to stripping it green and re-soaking it might reduce some of its effectiveness. But uh, yeah, all in all, I'm happy. Like I said, if you've got any suggestions, drop them in the comments. If you like this video, then feel free to hit that like button. I'll know to keep making them. And uh, if you want to see more and stay up to date with everything we're doing here on the farm, then hit that subscribe button so you get that little notification ding. Y'all have a good rest of your week.